So we've made a stop. Uh, Nick, where are we? I don't know. Okay. We're not sure where we are. Well, actually, we know where we are at this moment. We're inside this cave. Good morning, day nine in Iceland. We're on that little island of Haimeini. Haimeini. I'm getting tired of saying I'm pronouncing that terribly. Uh, just getting a little bit of a slower start this morning, letting people recover from that trip yesterday. Some of you might think I was exaggerating. Um, I didn't take any video of people hurling over the side, but it was significant. And they pass out these little Chinese food containers, uh, or actually larger Chinese food containers. They've got stacks of them all over the boat for people to barf in. But now we are on this gorgeous little island. We just walked from the hotel. I don't know, three minute walk to this scene here with these cliffs in the background. Uh, a little bit of a museum here, water, fantastic. Tiny, tiny, but up there in that grass are a couple sheep roaming around. I'm gonna call them mountain sheep because they're right so close to the cliff. As much as this country is, or almost all of it built on lava, we've got some lava, old lava chunks all around us. Some oyster catcher birds flying by right now and bits of sun. Although the weather forecast over the next couple of days is supposed to be off and on sun and rain. One of the nice things about traveling with so many other photographers is sometimes you get a chance to try gear that you wouldn't normally try. David's been uh, very generous with his Tamron 150 to 600 that people have been throwing on and getting some really super telephoto zoom shots. Uh, and I just borrowed from Steve his 24 millimeter tilt shift lens. I've never shot with a tilt shift. I have currently in for review that Venus Optics 15 millimeter shift lens, uh, but this also has tilt capabilities. You can create those miniature diorama-like effects with this. I just wanted to share this tilt shift lens in operation just a little bit more. It's, it's really quite neat. So it has both tilt and shift functionality. And one of the things that uh, is really cool about the tilt is the fact that you can rotate it. Well, you can actually rotate for the shift as well. Both of these things can be rotated independently. But with the tilt rotated, you are tilting the focus plane. So normally, with the normal lens, your focus plane is out there parallel to the front of your lens, somewhere out in front of you, a near focus and a far focus point, and in between that, your circle of confusion, the area that's in focus. But with a tilt shift lens, or a tilt lens, you have the capability of tilting that plane of focus. So you can see right now, using Sony's focus peaking on the back of this camera, that that little white scribbly bits, that is the peaking that shows you it's in focus. It is not parallel to the plane of the sensor. And in fact, I can start to rotate this dial and you can see that I can spin the point of focus almost perpendicular to the plane. If I rotate the focus ring, that plane moves across my image. So this allows for some really unique shots where everything from very close to very far is in focus in a thin line. And outside of that, things are out of focus. You also have the shift functionality. So let me... Behind me, you can see one of the volcanoes and the volcano, the second volcano that erupted in 1973 and material flowed down covering part of the town. You can see just a little bit of one of the houses that was fairly recently rediscovered. Uh, you know, it wasn't covered by lava, it was covered by this tephra, they call it, T-E-P-H-R-A, which is kind of like the loose stone and ash material that just falls off the sides of the volcano as it's all erupting. My question though, do you think the real estate for these houses depreciated a little bit after 1973, considering they are so close to these volcanoes that could erupt again. The view from the tip top of the volcano, or at least the rim of the crater or caldera, and you can see down below that actually it's that wall of the crater caldera collapsed and stuff flowed out in that direction. Again, away from town. Beautiful view, saw a rainbow for a few moments, 
watch the ship leave the harbor. And it's misting lightly now. Shot some few time lapses up here. Tried to capture some of this where we've got some steam still finding its way up out of this volcano, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and just this, these views and the islands in the distance, all part of the Western Islands archipelago. And you can see them off in that direction as well. Before and after, you can see over here on the left-hand side that how wide the harbor opening is. And now if you look back there, it is much more narrow. All right, check out the scene. So we're on the tour of the island, which literally the one main road that around the island took us about five minutes, but we're now off onto this little side road. Just some beautiful scenes with the ocean in the background. And we've got uh, some Icelandic horses and sheep all in the same pasture here, cooperating so nicely for pictures. All right, we're at another side of the island here with this little bit of an overlook in cliffs. Uh, our tour guide, Frosty, told us that on in warmer days, 10 to 15 Celsius, they all come swimming over on this side of the island. There's a little beach over there. But we are up above, a couple puffins flying by here and there. The views here are just incredible. This is a little puffin viewing blind. All right, our time on this island has come to an end and you can see the ferry pulling in or backing in behind me. I'm not making any predictions today about people's well-being on this ferry, but I will say that it is much, much calmer. It's a beautiful sunny day, a little bit of a breeze. And uh, because it is calmer, we actually get to take the shorter ferry route, which is just 45 minutes. So let's cross our fingers and hope everybody uh, does just fine. So I've mentioned this a couple of times, but one of the things that I do really like about the 5D SR is the video time-lapse mode where it is shooting basically still images, uh, but will produce a video in camera, which is a really nice feature. So I don't have to do any of that uh, time-consuming and processor power-consuming time-lapses. Now there are downsides to that, uh, some additional impact on battery life, you don't have raw files that you can do a lot of editing with, but for quick time lapses, this is a really nice way to uh, get a shot. This little lava tube, mossy covered cave that the entrance, we'll show you in a second, is quite small, just big enough for a person at a time. And then there's a bit of room. You could see a little bit of light. You could skinny crawl. If you were skinny, you could crawl. That's what that means through that little hole right there. It's kind of cool. All kinds of fun stuff we're discovering here someplace. Not too far outside of Reykjavik as we make our way back. <laughs> 